Since its announcement, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner has been a huge success with a high number of orders, surpassing 1,700. With that outstanding achievement, it became the best-selling wide-body aircraft in history. However, when looking closely at the versions of this aircraft, we can see an extremely significant difference in their number of orders. The 787-10 is lagging behind compared to the other two. What's going on? Why is the 787-10 so difficult to sell? What moves does Boeing make to attract the market? Let's find out. The 787-10 is the youngest but largest member of the 787 family. According to Boeing, the Dash 10 can accommodate up to 336 rows of passengers in a two-class configuration. With faster travel speeds and a more modern, forward-looking design, this aircraft is destined to replace the Boeing 777-200 and 200 in ER. The 777 series is one of the company's best-selling products. They have sold nearly 600 units since their launch. However, they also show signs of aging. The oldest produced ones are almost 30 years old. They are too fit to be replaced. Dash 10 is a big step forward. The aircraft uses composite materials combined with high power. Its modern engines deliver 25% less carbon dioxide emission. In addition, it meets all current regulatory noise limits, has optimized cabin noise, reduces its environmental footprint, and is fully recyclable. From all the possibilities identified by Boeing, it is expected that this aircraft will make a lot of money for the manufacturer. But reality shows that this is not the case at all. Orders received were only 258, a modest number, less than half that of the 777-200 and only 14% of total 787 orders. Dash 10 did not cost too much to develop, so the number of more than 200 units sold has partly brought profits to Boeing. But it was expected to sell much more than that. So what is the reason why its order quantity is so modest? The first factor to mention is its competitiveness in the market. Dash 10 is more disadvantageous in terms of launch time than its predecessor or competitors. In 1995, when the 777-200 was first introduced to the public, it had few competitors. A few names at that time that could match the range and capacity of the 200 were the Trijet McDonnell Douglas MD-11 and the Quadjet Airbus A340. But the advantage is still in favor of the 200 because compared to the previous names, it is a twinjet aircraft, so it is much more fuel efficient. And basically, it competes with almost nothing. Not so lucky, the 787-10 has no outstanding features that can compete directly with the A350-900. Like other aircraft in the 787 family, it is also a clean design built primarily from composite materials. Many aviation enthusiasts put two planes on the scale to compare which one has an engine that burns less fuel. In fact, they are all very similar in terms of effectiveness. Therefore, according to common sense, these two aircraft should divide the market 50-50 between Dash 10 and 900. But considering the timing of the A350-900's launch, it was launched long before Dash 10. It was this big head start that helped Airbus lure many 777 operators to their side before Dash 10 won any business opportunity. Airbus sold hundreds of a 350 before the Dash 10 launched. Clearly, its late entry into the market affected its sales. But that's not the only factor causing it to fall behind. Looking at their sales figures after their launch, we can see the difference in the reviews of the two aircraft from the airlines. Since the Dash 10 was introduced, he has never been able to surpass the A350-900. People really expected the numbers to not be that different. So it can be seen that Dash 10 has encountered another problem. It has a flaw of design. As mentioned, the Dash 10 is the longest fighter in the 787 family. However, it is quite confusing when the manufacturer decided to keep its wingspan the same length. As a result, it shares a wing with two shorter aircraft, the 787-8 and 9. Boeing has optimized the wing around these two downsized variants. There is speculation that the company did not change wings because of an effort to reduce development costs and ensure that the Dash 10 would reach the market in time. However, that also meant that the Dash 10 flew with wings that were not optimized for its size. Compared to the wing size of its predecessor, the 777-200, it is about 14% smaller and about 20% smaller than the wing of the A350-900. And as is known, modern aircraft fuel is stored in their wings.
With smaller wings, the end result is that the 787-10 cannot have nearly the same flight range as its competitors. With nearly 2,000 nautical miles longer range, the A35900 completely outperforms the Dash 10, and even the outdated 777-200ER beats it. The lack of range has affected customer choices. The plane cannot perform many trans-Pacific missions, a route that is becoming increasingly popular. That's why it missed a great opportunity. Therefore, the suitable choice for airlines is none other than the 35900. Asian airlines such as Air China, Asiana, and Starlux have chosen the Airbus airplane because of its high capabilities. Clearly, Boeing needs to start doing something to save this situation. The prospect of a 787-10ER is entirely possible. Engineers must reconsider the design of aircraft fuel tanks and change the wings to be able to hold more fuel. Perhaps this will reduce the aircraft's cargo capacity, but the sacrifice is worth it because the aircraft will have a wider operating range. They built the ER version of the 777 aircraft extremely successfully before. Specifically, they added 1,800 nautical miles compared to the regular 777-200. Similar improvements to the Dash 10 would make it competitive with the A35900, but in reality, doing so is extremely difficult. Because the Dash 10 not only borrowed its wings from the Dash 8 and 9, it also borrowed the landing gear. It seems unlikely that this unit could handle the extra weight of adding fuel. The manufacturer would likely need to significantly reinforce or even completely redesign it to be effective on the ER version. But most of all, Boeing is not interested in developing ER at this moment. They are devoting manpower to focus mainly on the training program to complete the 777XA MAX 7 and MAX 10 certification. At the same time, they are also working to resolve some production issues. The failure of the Dash 10 ER to materialize does not mean that Boeing did nothing to address the performance gap compared to the 900. They said they are making some adjustments to expand their scope of operations at the upcoming Paris Air Show. When asked how they are making the jet more competitive, Boeing VP of Commercial Marketing Darren Hulst said not much has changed. They will proceed to give the 787-10 a longer operating range of about 500 nautical miles. The reason why that's important is that it puts it first because that's absolutely what the 787-10 can do. Boeing wanted to prove that the Dash 10 was not just a transit plane but a trans-Pacific plane. Since then, it has become extremely flexible in the networks that airlines are operating. He revealed there is just over a year left until they complete the improvements to the Dash 10. The aircraft itself is still only a Dash 10 but with a much higher maximum takeoff weight capability. There is some debate about whether Boeing made the right decision here. Boeing probably deserves some credit for being resourceful after all this action helped the Dash 10 become a legitimate Trans-Pacific workhorse without having to commit too many resources to the project. On the other hand, this approach is only a half step, and it still leaves a large performance gap between the Dash 10 and the A350. In recent years, Airlines have used the A350's enhanced performance to open new long-haul routes such as Singapore to San Francisco, Manila to New York, and Atlanta to Johannesburg. It is easy to judge that these flights were successful and that, in fact, none of these missions could have been carried out with an altered version of the Dash 10. The ultra-long-haul market is becoming more popular, but they are still just a fraction of all routes. While the Dash 10 hasn't gone very far, Boeing's smaller 787-9 can and does serve some difficult missions, such as flying from Sydney to Dallas, London to Perth and New York to Oakland. Despite the fact that the Dash 9 carries fewer passengers than the A350 does, no one can deny that it represents Boeing in performing a noble duty in this market segment. Last year, several customers such as United, Air Canada and Qantas placed orders for the jets last year. This is a positive sign for Boeing. Therefore, it is difficult to say that the lead of the A350-900 is the final result of the competition between the two aircraft of the two manufacturers. It seems it's still early to determine that. But for Boeing, what they really need to do are changes on the 787-10 to get the program back on track, making the plane reach its full potential. And about its competitor, the Airbus A350-900 is gaining trust when being chosen for important long-distance projects. Sunrise is a typical case. By the way, if you want to learn more about how this aircraft is operated by Qantas, click on the link on the screen.